Hello, I'm Pamela Butcher and I'm the author of the Izzy series of books illustrated by the fantastic Thomas Flintham and published by Nosy Crow. Now, you might have spotted some of my books before because they've got some amazing front covers and some very catchy titles such as my head teacher is a vampire rat, the spy who loves school dinners. There's a yeti in the playground. <gasps> Attack of the demon dinner ladies. <laughs> the books are absolutely beautiful. Uh, they're uh, illustrated by Thomas Flintham and they're designed by Nicola Theobald. And every single time there's a new book, I always say to Tom, oh my goodness, that's my favorite, 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 favorite cover ever. And then, and then Nicola and Tom do the next cover. And I say, oh my goodness, that's my absolutely favorite cover ever. But I have to say, there is a brand new book just out and it is the 10th book in the Izzy series. And you know what I'm gonna say? It's my most favorite cover ever. It really, really, really is. And it's called, oh, we need to do a drum roll if I'm gonna show you the brand new book. Drum roll, please, everyone at home. All the children, all the adults, all the parents, all the carers, all the teachers. One, two, three. Dun, dun, dun. The broken leg of doom. <gasps> now, in this one, they're not actually in school, they're in the hospital because Maisie has gone and broken her leg. And she's broken her leg when she was doing some seriously extreme dancing. Now, I've never broken my leg, <gasps> hope I never do, or my arm, or my hand, or my ankle, or anything like that. I did once think I'd broken my fifth metatarsal when I used to teach basketball in America, and they put this great big boot thing on me in the hospital. It was all very dramatic. And just in case you're wondering or you don't know, your fifth metatarsal is actually your pinky toe. But it turns out it was just very badly bruised, but it was very, very sore. So anyway, here, wow. Well, well, Jodie says they have to do extreme dancing, which is when you dance as fast as you can for as long as you can. And poor Maisie gets very dizzy because of all the dancing and she trips and falls and she breaks her leg and she has to go to the hospital in an ambulance. Now, like that isn't scary enough, when they get there, there's a really weird statue in the hospital and it smells weird and there's strange scratching sounds at night. But when Maisie wakes up and sees it, there's secret messages written on her cast. That's when her and Jody and Zach and Izzy have to do something about this and start a very serious investigation. And there's loads of other stuff that happens. Like, for example, Maisie loves humpback whales. They're her favourite animal of all time, which is quite weird because Maisie's quite small and she's quite scared of loads of things, especially big things. So it's weird that her favourite animal ever is a humpback whale. And she's taken it to hospital with her. Her mum's brought it in for her. And it keeps on going missing. It's called Francisco and it keeps moving around the hospital until one day it's completely whale napped. Oh, so it's gone. So they have to include that in their investigation. Have to find out who has stolen Francisco. And I'll tell you a little sneaky bit from later in the book, but I don't want to ruin it for you. They might at night see somebody completely covered in bandages. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Now, I think I shall read you the very first chapter of The Broken Leg of Doom. And uh, I really like chapter titles, actually. Some of them are quite fun to write, like this one. Dancing Injury to the Right Leg. Hmm. Oh, the chapter one is Bad Things Always Happen in Threes. Are you ready? Are your bums comfy? Let's do this. I knew something bad was going to happen as soon as we arrived at the hospital. And I knew it because my mum says that bad things always happen in threes. And two bad things had already happened that day because Jodie made us all do extreme dancing, which is when you dance as fast as you can for as long as you can. And Maisie got dizzy and she fell and broke her leg. And then we were in Jodie's mum's car following the ambulance to hospital. I reached into my bag to get my Twix because I was starving after all the dancing, but it was gone. <gasps> and that's when I remember I'd already eaten it on my way to school. So. so anyway, when we got to the hospital, I got a weird feeling and it was because of a creepy statue in the entrance and the weird shape of Maisie's leg under the blanket and the strange boy with feather in his hat but it was when we found out about the curse that we knew. Maisie and her leg were in deep trouble. Dun, dun, dun. Wow. <laughs> the idea um, for, for this book, well, at least the start of this book, 
uh, that you could injure yourself while doing extreme dancing came from the fact that when I was at primary school, me and our friends used to do dance routines and extreme dancing all the time. Uh, and you used to have to get the, the dance routines perfect before you could actually perform them in the playground, which is where we used to do our performances. I think that the best one that uh, me and my friend Suzanne ever did was a, a, a very fast, very adventurous dance routine to uh, Bart Simpson's Do the Bart Man. Uh, if you've never heard that before, you should ask your mum and dad or your carer uh, about that or uh, your granny or your auntie and they might be able to find that for you. Um, but we performed that, me and my friend Suzanne, in the playground and we did it very seriously and very quickly. Now, none of us fell, but there were sometimes uh, some extreme dancing injuries. And that's somehow sometimes how I start a book. I just have like one small memory from my time at primary school. It's always primary school. And then I start writing about that and before I know, it just kind of takes on a life of its own. So, you know, writing a little bit about extreme dancing and then having the idea that actually Maisie could fall and break her leg. And then before you know it, it's like, do, 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 all these ideas come to me. Now, that's easy for me to say, but some of you might sometimes want to, to write a story and maybe it starts off well, uh, but you don't know where to go next. Or maybe you're fine once you've started writing, um, but to begin with, you're not quite sure how to get going. Now, I actually have, I have a solution for this, something that works for me and I hope it'll work for you too. I always pick something that really, really happened. Uh, usually that's what I do. I pick something that, that, that really happened and then I come up with a, a different explanation. So for example, in primary school, I had loads of questions. I wanted to know what everyone was up to. I wanted to know all the teacher's business. I wanted to know what the librarian was doing. Why was, why was she allowed to wear shoes like that and the teachers weren't? Um, why was this teacher late to school today? Why did this teacher not work there anymore? Why did we have to eat the shepherd's pie from school dinners even though it was clearly poison? And what was quite annoying, or I found quite annoying, is nobody ever answered my questions. They would say things like, oh, um, you're supposed to be doing your uh, your maths work just now. Or, oh, that's, that's not polite to ask um, about people's shoes or something like that. And uh, so we just basically had to come up with the answers ourselves. Our imagination used to go wild. So, for example, maybe um, one time we went on, this did happen, one time we uh, go on a school bus on a trip and the bus smelled, like smelled, like you couldn't even be excited about going on your school trip anymore because the bus smelled and all you could do was talk about the smell that was on the bus and what it could possibly be and whether there's like a beaver or a badger that had sadly passed away on the bus so we'd check under the seats for a deceased beaver or a badger or something like that. Maybe there was something still on the bus that was bigger and hairier and scarier and smellier and we couldn't see it. Uh, was there a toilet on the bus? Was the door locked? Is that because there was some big hairy scary beast in there that smelled bad? Um, was the smell coming from one of the teachers? Had they maybe had like a really strong Indian curry for the tea the night before or something like that. So basically we had to solve all the mysteries. So you can pick something small like a smelly bus and then you can come up with a reason why it smells. Now, if you can get to that point where you can think about something that really happened at school that was slightly odd or maybe even it was really, really boring but you change it or something that happened at home, something I quite like to do uh, when I'm out and about and I'm in schools and doing events is get people to share a story, to make a story together. So if you're at home, whoever you're at home with, so if you're at home with your mum or your dad or your carer or whoever you live with, maybe you could do one part of the story and they could do the next part of the story and they've got no idea what you're going to say and you've got no idea what they're going to say and you just keep on doing a bit and you keep trying to like make it more wild and weird and wonderful and try to beat the person and it before you know it, the story will probably get out of hand. Now, you can also use props if one of you gets stuck or if you get stuck if you're doing the story by yourself. And uh, that can be anything. Props, I, I, this is something that um, happened because when I first started writing and I used to get to a bit when I was writing my Izzy stories where I got stuck, I would kind of like look around my desk and see what was there. And sometimes I've got some quite strange stuff on my desk, I suppose, uh, like a tiny little plastic hamster. And I think, ah, oh, could you get married? to a poodle, then before you know it, uh, that was Pugly Solves a Crime. I got stuck and then I introduced uh, the marriage of a, a guinea pig, not a hamster, a creative license and a poodle. Um, so I like to take little objects from my house uh, when I do events and we're in my house. Ta -da! This is one of the very first events in my new cottage right on the beach because me and my wee boy moved house and because we're on the beach and there's lots of water sounds that we can hear, I think that my next Izzy book might just have to be about the water. Dun dun dun. So 
let's see. My writing challenge to you is I would like you to pick something that happened at primary school or at home that was slightly strange. Like if it was at school, have you ever seen a little scratch on your teacher's finger, for example? How did she get that? Did you ask her where she got it from? Would she not tell you? Why would she not tell you? <gasps> is it because she's hiding a werewolf in her basement? <gasps> is it because she is the werewolf? Dun, dun, dun. Has a teacher, another teacher or the librarian or a classroom assistant ever, ever come to your door, a classroom door, knocked on the door and your teacher's rushed over and have they ever whispered? What were they whispering about? Was a secret note ever passed from one of the office ladies to your teacher? What was written on the note? Maybe you could use one of those. What do teachers whisper about? What's on the secret notes? Are there ever any places in the playground or in the school that are out of bounds? And there's maybe even a sign that says out of bounds or there's no sign, but you're told it's out of bounds. Mm, why is it out of bounds? If they told you there's a leak, hmm, you probably still shouldn't go in there, but what if it's not a leak? What if it's not, you know, because maybe somebody's been sick or something like that? What if it is something worse? Like what if it's got to do with giant rats? What if it has got to do with aliens? What if it's got to do with that teacher with a scratch on her finger who's maybe a werewolf? <gasps> so pick something that's happened at school or at home and try to add to it now. I have a very special prop for you. I'm only gonna show you one prop today and I'd like to try and incorporate it into your story, which means I want you to fit this into your story somehow. So this video is for the Moon Lane book channel, the children's book channel, Moon Lane TV on YouTube. So I thought what a wonderful prop would be an actual moon, but not just any moon, a moon that changes colour. <gasps> so maybe you've ended up with the moon in your hands, maybe the moon has fallen from the sky, or maybe you've noticed when you've been looking out your window at night when you can't sleep, that sometimes the moon changes <laughs> colour. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck with your writing challenge and I hope you enjoy the brand new book in the Izzy series, The Broken Leg of Doom. Dun, dun, dun. Now, if you do decide to try extreme dancing, please don't do it too fast and don't do it for too long because you'll get exhausted. But feel free to come up with some cool dance routines. If you don't know how to start, I'm very good at the robot. Basically, the robot is when you do this with your arm. This bit has to stay completely straight. Look how good I am at this. I can't believe it. But this arm goes like this. And if you feel really adventurous, you can use this hand, which is not really doing anything when you're doing a video and you're doing a robot at the same time. And you can use this hand to hit this hand so that this hand goes absolutely wild and goes round and round. And there you have it a dance routine. Thank you very much. I've been Pamela Butcher and you've been wonderful. Bye.